Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is Rabbi Yisrael Meir Cohen Kagan, known as the Chavetz Chaim, born in 1838 and dies in 1933. Rabbi Yisrael Meir Cohen, known as Pupko in his early life and later adopting the surname of Kagan, is the great proof that a person's reputation and their impact does not derive always from their institutional position or from their official title or role, but can derive from their reputation for scholarship and for saintliness. And in both of these regards, the Chavetz Chaim was completely outstanding. He was born in Grodno, but was taken to Vilna early in his life so his parents would give him a better and more advanced rabbinic education. And then he became the rabbi of Radin, a small and not very important town in Lithuania. And there he stayed essentially for the rest of his life. He left the town rabbinate early on to found a yeshiva, not one of the great yeshivas of Eastern Europe, but it was nevertheless his base. However, he wrote very extensively many books on many different topics of use to the Jews of his day. His most famous volume of this genre, called Chofetz Chaim, is a guide to how to avoid speaking slander and gossip, and applies all the detail and rigor of the halachic system, the Jewish legal system, to avoiding falling into saying things which one ought not to about other people. He took it from a level of simply saying, avoid gospel about other people and saying precisely what that meant and how that should be avoided. It was said of him, incidentally, that you might think that his conversation would be very boring because it was so restricted in what he thought that people could or should say. In fact, he was a great conversationist who was always very witty and engaging in conversation and could do so without ever talking about other people or what other people were doing. His work, which is most used day to day, is called Mishnah Brura, and it's a commentary on the Arachayim section of the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, dealing with day to day matters like prayer and Shabbat and Yom Tov and so on and so forth. And it summarizes all the legal opinions since the Shulchan Aruch was written in the 16th century up until his day at the turn of the 19th to 20th century. His style is very interesting because he gives suggestions for more strict observance, but gives options also for more lenient observance for those who are unable, for whatever reason, to adopt the stricter position. He wasn't the author of this large work, but he was the editor, and therefore his name is permanently attached to this work and its achievement. There are very few pictures of the Chavetz Chaim. He may be one of those who objected to taking a photograph because he felt this was an infringement of the prohibition on drawing or making an image of the human form, the most famous picture may be, in fact, the local butcher who he asked to take a photo in his place. But in more recent years, some more photographs and indeed one film has become available showing the Chofetz Chaim. I will conclude with a story from London. There was a Dayan, a head of a Beth Din in London called Dayan Michal Fisher, and he was one of the small group of people who used to learn with the Chofetz Chaim in Radin and also used to live in his house and help him with household tasks. And he used to say, these hands, wash the hands, of the Chofetz Chaim. His reputation for saintliness succeeded really even his reputation for scholarship, and it was an honor for Rabbi Fisher to do even the most minor tasks for such an extraordinary man as Rabbi Yisrael Meir Hakohen Kagan. Thanks for joining.